Coming to the stage, first up is my dude from Oakland, California. Two is all over the country. Just got off the road with Mike Epps, one of the funniest dudes on the planet. Y'all put your hands together right now. Put your hands together right now. Give it up for my man, Mario Hodge. LA, what's up? How y'all doing? Man, it's, I ain't never did comedy code. <laughs> it's, it's cold up in here, y'all. We need to pass the collection plate so they can turn PGE on. <laughs> yeah, man, it's cold, man. It's so cold out here. It's 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 cold out here uh, and windy. That um, I took an Uber today and it was a bird inside the Uber with me. <laughs> Like, we shared a ride together. He didn't want to fly in this cold weather. <laughs> I said, wow, man. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. It's a, yeah, man. It's, it's cold. It's, I'm, I'll tell you, I got to get, I'm, I'm, I stay in Oakland. It's hood in Oakland. It's hood out here, too. But it's really hood in Oakland, man. Like, like, I, my, like it's cold. Right now, it's cold. I ordered, a, um, I ordered a, a, a jacket, a puff jacket offline off of, uh, off of uh, Old Navy. And uh, the UPS man so ghetto, this dude came delivering my jacket with it on. <laughs> he said, it's too cold, man. I <laughs> he made me sign for a used jacket. <laughs> I was so mad, man. Man. And Oakland is like, though, I got to give y'all some insight about Oakland, man, if you ain't never been there. But it's like one of the number one cities for robbery. Number one city for robbery in the United States. Um, I think it's the number two, number, number, I think number two or number one from when I last looked it up. But anybody will rob you in Oakland. Anybody will rob you in Oakland, so you got to be careful, man. This woman came up to me and robbed me, and I had my son with me. And she had um, some stilettos on, she had a pencil skirt on, a nice blast, blouse, and she had a pink ski mask on. This how, I, this how I knew she was ghetto, because she had her fake eyelashes glued on the outside of her ski mask. <laughs> <laughs> she said, break yourself, sucker, right now. I said, please, lady, don't kill me. I got kids. She says, I know, fool. We got kids together. <laughs> this ended up being my own baby mama, man. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> Oh, man. I even got robbed by a deaf dude. I don't know how to communicate with no deaf dude. I don't know nothing about sign language or none of that, man. This dude had the nerve to rob me with a note. <laughs> he gives me the note. I open it up. He said, give me everything you got right now. But I noticed something about the note. The note was written in pencil, and he had a pencil behind his ear. So this was my chance to communicate with him so I don't get killed. So I take the pistol from him behind his ear, and I erased everything he had on a piece of paper. I wrote what I needed to write to him, hand it back to him. He opened it up and said, please, man, don't kill me. I got kids and a family. He got mad at me, snatched the pencil back from me, erased everything I had on a piece of paper. Wrote what he needed to write to me, hand it back. I opened it up. It said, fool, I don't want to hear all that. <laughs> you deaf. What are you talking about you don't want to hear all that? And he had the nerve to take my headphones, my, my Dre beats. <laughs> I was so mad at this dude, man. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. I want to, um, my brothers and sisters in here, do y'all know that a bag in California, you got to pay for a bag, right? Do y'all know it's only 10 cents, right? So why y'all don't buy a bag? Why y'all don't buy bags? Every, black people do not buy, we're the cheapest people ever. We, we'll walk out the store with all our stuff in our hand. We don't. I see this all the time in Walmart and Target. I'm in line, this, this, this guy, he just, this lady said, you, you want a bag? He said, no, I got it. He had vacuum cleaner, mop, potatoes, pickles. <laughs> I 
It's just 10 cent, y'all. Damn. <clears throat> Ladies, I got to talk to the sisters real quick, man. Um, don't let no man tell you what beauty is. Right. Love who you are. Love yourself. You know, you ain't got to wear those, I call them bulletproof vests. You, <laughs> You ain't got to wear the Spanx and the girdles. Because you got to take that off, ladies. I mean, here you are, looking like an hourglass with that thing on. Then when you take it off, you look like a can of beans. You don't need it. Because a man going to love you regardless. If, 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 that man gonna, if that man love you unconditionally, he going to love you from head to toe regardless. So embrace your, embrace your size. Embrace who you are. I, I, I love a, feel, a, a full-figured lady. I love a full. I have no shame. I, I love it. I, I, I'm, if anybody in here offended by this, but I, don't, I, I can't date skinny women. I can't. I can't at all. I'm skinny myself. So I, I got to have a full-figure woman, you know. I, I had the roughest date I ever had in my life with a skinny woman. Took her to the movies to see Black Panther. We couldn't even have her enjoy it. I'm going to tell you why, because she's so light in the butt. She's so light in the butt. She's too light. We in the movie theater. She's so light in the butt, her seat kept popping up on her the whole time. We in. I had to put my popcorn and drink in her lap so it could stay down. took my big girl to the movies. She went to the bathroom. Her seat stayed down until she got back. She done messed all the screws up in the day. The only thing I, I, I don't like, I see a lot of older, mature people doing this. See a lot of heavy set men and women doing this. When y'all shop, all heavy set people or lazy people shop the same way. They all shop the same. You see this in Target, you see this in Walmart, Food Co. Food, whatever your stores y'all got out here. Y'all try to shop and get rest at the same time. <laughs> Have you ever seen them lean up against the basket and push? I had, a I had a terrible uh, Valentine's Day. Yeah, terrible, man. But I, I tried to spend it, you know, with the fellas. So we went to the strip club. So, man. People, to, to survive now, we got to work two or three jobs to survive to pay the rent now. Like, I'm going like, to, like, people be like, uh, you looking good now. You, what diet you on? I say, rent. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford to eat. <laughs> So I'm slimming up. But this girl, she was a, why are you stripping and you got two or three jobs? She going around the pole and yarning at the same. <laughs> she come give me a lap dance and she give me a lap dance. She fall asleep in my lap. I said, if you don't get up. Doesn't nobody want to be a taxi, but everybody work for Uber now. Ain't that crazy? Man, I think some of the most, well, I ain't going to say think. I know. I know the most beautiful women on this, in this earth, on this, in this world, are black women. <laughs> but let's talk about something. I want to get something off my chest. I think... Women are so beautiful. Black women are so beautiful when y'all got braids in y'all hair. When y'all got them braids in y'all hair, y'all are Nubian queens. Oh, my God. Y'all look so good. Now, here's the problem. <laughs> Get you somebody that's going to braid your hair that care about you, ladies. <laughs> because when they braid your hair, sometimes they braid it too tight. 
And when you take it out, all your sides and edges are gone. Why is your fake eyelashes longer than your edges? Something is wrong. And what's the number one hairstyle a black woman put her hair in when she take, when she take the braids out? Because she, she want her hair to breathe and, you know, wash it out and stuff. What she put it in? A ponytail, right? Why would you put it in that ponytail and your sides and edges are gone? And then you posting pictures on Facebook saying, oh, yeah, I'm a natural queen. Look at me. And, this and, all. and all your sides and edges are gone. You know how you look to us? I'm just going to show you because evidently you don't. When all your sides and edges are gone, this is how you look. I'm so tired of this. Do you see this, ladies? <laughs> so tired of it. Got to get it together, y'all, man. <laughs> we got to do something about that, man. <laughs> we got to stop telling everybody our business on Facebook. Yes, stop it, man. I learned the hard way. Somebody broke into my house, stole my TV. My TV, man, my, my. but they stole the TV that don't work. <laughs> I got on Facebook and I was like, somebody broke into my house, they stole my 55 inch TV. I asked what they get, my new one is in the back, in my back room. Ah, <laughs> well, that dude broke back into my house. Put the TV back that didn't work and took the word in that way it worked. <laughs> so you gotta be, you gotta watch who you, what you write on Facebook, man. You gotta write really, 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 really watch it, watch it. Now people be following you, follow you on, you know, you see, you see where it says follow, you got followers now, and see older people don't understand how Facebook works. My mother's 75 years old, and every time she get a notification, it says somebody is following her. She around the house looking. I said, mama, <laughs> that means you got a new uh, friend. They're just, they following you on Facebook now. Like, they watching your page. She said, oh, Lord, I didn't know. <laughs> Everybody smoking weed now that they legalize it. Yeah, I went to a church, and the reverend was high. He forgot what he was talking about. And God said... And God said, so he just started making up stuff. Ain't no river, ain't no way, ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough for Jesus. He just started making up stuff, man. We are like, how, how you get the R&B in, 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 in your sermon? Hey, you cry, boy, that weed is something else, boy. That weed is something else. Now they got this new music. I can't stand the new music, y'all. He got this new music, man, where it's so disrespectful to the black women, and our kids are listening to this mess. Oh, man, it hurts my feelings, man, because I got, I got my daughters, and I'm raising my daughters, and they got this guy named Ty. I'm a, I'm a 70s baby. I grew, up, I grew up on Luther Vandross, Marvin Gaye, you know, Temptations, real music. And they got this guy named Ty Dolla Sign. Dude is ghetto. He got this song called Paranoid. Now, I can't sing all the lyrics, but I'll throw a, I'll, I'll throw a word in there that you guys can understand. But he, uh, I'm just going to throw the word. He said the B word, but I'm going to throw heifer in there because a, a, a lot of women like to use that word as a term of endearment now. You know? So he, he says, um, I got both my heifers in the club, and they know about each other. I think these heifers trying to set me up. Or am I just paranoid? Now, we went from ain't no woman like the one I got to now we, <laughs> now we got both our heifers in the club. <laughs> this is very disrespectful stuff, man. And, but I was having to think about it. I'm a 70s baby. What if Luther Vandross, Marvin Gaye, and, and, and the Temptations and all of them had these same exact lyrics? Would, would, I, would we be so judgmental? 
You want me to tell you why we wouldn't be judgmental? Because they were soulful singers. So we, 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 will, we will, just think about Luther Vandross, same exact lyrics. He'll be like, ooh, both my heifers are in this club. And they know about each other. I think these heifers trying to set me up. What if the Temptations did it? They'd be like, I got both my heifers up in this club. And they know about each other. I think these heifers trying to set me up. Hey, I think these heifers trying to set me up. These hoes, these hoes, these hoes talking about these hoes, these hoes. What if Marvin Gaye? Mercy, mercy me. He was playing to both of his black friends that both of his heifers just walked in the club. He'd be like, Negro, Negro, both my heifers in this club. Oh, and they know about each other. I think these heifers trying to set me up. Ooh, Negro, get out my way. Mm -hmm. For I don't have nowhere to stay. Hey, Negro move, Negro. These heifers ain't cool. <laughs> Stand, new addition. Stand the rain. Johnny be like, a uh, who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 I got both of my heifers up in this club. Oh, oh, oh. And they know about. They know about each other. Then Ralph would be like, and I think these half us is trying to set me up. What if Stevie Wonder was a pimp? What if Stevie Wonder was a pimp? Uh, before I get into it, I was listening to Stevie Wonder. That's one of my favorite artists, Stevie Wonder. I love that man to death. And I was listening to one of his songs lately, and uh, this never dawned on nobody in here. I was listening to it, and he was like, um, uh, how do, how do it go? Lately I've been staring in the mirror, oh yeah. I'm thinking to myself, why is Stevie Wonder staring in the mirror? <laughs> but what if Stevie was a pimp? He wouldn't have braids, he'd have a perm. So Stevie would be looking like this, y'all. But it'd be a Stevie of the day, you know his hairline, so his perm would sit way back here. <laughs> hey, that's so funny, I couldn't even do it. It's 2018, man. I hate to say it, y'all, and I don't want to offend nobody in here, but the gay stuff ain't going nowhere. It's not going to go anywhere, y'all. Matter of fact, fellas, if you ain't gay, you better learn how to act gay. <laughs> I ain't telling you to do something. I ain't telling you to do nothing sexual. I'm just telling you, it just act, it gets you out of trouble. I'm going to tell you what happened to me when I'm in the club, having a good time in the club, and I see this girl from the back, I don't see her from the front. She got a nice you know, body and everything, nice hair, nice dress, nice shoes, everything. I said, woo, this is the one, I'm gonna go over here and talk to her. So I go over there, I tapped her on the shoulder, she turned around, she was ugly. 
I got into character real fast. She turned around, she said, you talking to me? I said, you sure right, I am talking to you. Where you get that dress from, honey? I want one. <laughs> I had to get out of that. <laughs> I can't stand Donald Trump. I hope y'all with me, right? Yeah, we're in the house of the Lord, but shoot, forget him. <laughs> That's one person we can hate. Jesus is going to forgive us. <laughs> I think black people should get together and we should build a wall around the White House so he can't get out. I love Obama, man. I miss him. But Obama passed a law that you guys do not know of, that nobody even paid attention to, because they pass laws when they, when they pass on holidays. So we're too busy celebrating while they're passing laws right up under our nose. But they, Obama passed a hate crime law, and it's supposed to protect people of color. But it don't, because you see, we're still getting killed by the police every day in a different city, different state somewhere. And uh, what this hate crime law does is really protect the gay community. Now, I don't want nobody, like I said, if there's anybody here gay, don't get mad at me, so I don't want you being outside talking, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but the Nene is the gayest dance ever, man. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't no man shoulders and hips be at the same time doing this. <laughs> I was so mad because my kids taught me this, right? And I'm just in the house doing this all with them. And mind you, I got four daughters, right? And then it took me, it took me, when I went to the club, I'm just in there having fun, doing, I'm just nay nay like, until I, until I looked in the mirror, and I'm like, wait a minute, something ain't right here. So I start crip walking. <laughs> but yeah, Obama passed this law, and this law, if you have a fight with a gay person, the gay person can start it, you can protect yourself, you can beat this gay person up, and the gay person can lie to the police and say you beat them up for their sexual preference, and that can get you two to five years in prison. Two to five years in prison. Um, let me tell you a story what happened to me. I'm in the club again. <laughs> All right. I need to stay in the church. <laughs> I, I'm in the club and I'm dancing with this lady. We're having a good time. I bump into this fella on accident. That guy pushes me. I pushed him back. I had no idea he was gay until he hit the ground. And he said, ah! <laughs> so now he on his back, bicycle kicking at me, doing this, right? So I'm like, anybody, anybody know when you're trying to fight somebody and they bicycle kicking, you have to time, time it because the legs is doing this. So now, me and him looking gay, because I'm over him timing this, but I'm rocking like Devil Dutch, like this. So I jump, steps on him. He gets up and runs off. He come back 10 minutes later, I'm dancing. The police come in and they arrest me. They arrest me on a Friday night, and you can't get out of jail on a Friday night unless you bail yourself out. So I bail myself out. And um, I, I asked, before I, before I go to jail, I asked the, the, uh, the guys, what I'm going to jail for, please? What I'm going? I said, hate crime. I said, well, I don't got nothing against gay people. I said, my niece is gay. She's five years old. She can dribble my that little girl. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot guard her, man. She had to be gay. Uh, <laughs> so that, I had to prove to the judge that I, I had nothing against gay people. So. Um, I had to go to court and to prove this. And listen, fellas, remember why I talked to you earlier? I said, you better get in where you fit in. I said, if you ain't gay, you better learn how to act gay. Called my girlfriend. I said, bring me a shirt. She said, bring you a shirt. I said, bring me a shirt. I ain't no time to argue. I'm not trying to do two to five years. Just bring me a shirt. I tell you, when I walked up in that court, y'all, I walked up in that court like this, because I ain't going to jail for nobody. I'm trying to live my life, right? I walked up in that courthouse like this.
I said, Judge, first off, he's lying. We were fighting over another man. Tell the truth. The dude started saying, he lied. I said, I said, boom, shut up. Let me talk. The judge said, order in the court, both of you ladies. Hey, I'm Mario Hodge, man. Thank y'all for having me, man. Love y'all.